Welcome to Car Cone Carne. I'm James Van Ostel. In the car, as it was always intended to be, before I introduce my two guests, and I'm very excited to introduce my two guests, this coming week, later on, on Thursday, Ravinia, the Ravinia Festival is back, full season, dead ahead, at 6 a.m. Thursday morning, the announcement of the Ravinia Festival for 2022 will be made with me and my guest, no less than the chief marketing, chief brand and marketing officer of Ravinia, an old friend, Blake Smith. And we'll eat some Ravinia food too. Lots more to come in Carquin Carney, but tonight, tonight, to my right, he is the returning champion. He is Dennis Buckley. Hi. <laughs> in the back seat, we have Tim Murphy. Tim is the owner of Dante's Pizzeria on Chicago Avenue. Address? 1936 West Chicago Avenue. Tim, I have been to Dante's independently mm -hmm. as part of the podcast multiple times. I came back to Dante's after the first time the pandemic was yeah. over. And now like now that I'm back in the car and doing things, I wanted to come back right away. I love Dante's. Thank you. Thanks for jumping in the back seat. All right, Dennis, start distributing so we can talk about Dante's pizza. Okay. This is the vegan hippo pizza. All right, Tim, you gotta you gotta well, tell us what we're eating here. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about hippo here. I'm, I'm exactly. Making, I'm making fun. This is our Sunday solidarity slice. We do a thing with uh, the People's Pizza Project who donates pizza to unhoused communities around the city. So every Sunday we do a little bit more of a special slice. This one's got a guacamole salsa sauce. Oh, that's me. Uh, chorizo, white <laughs> onion, and okay. cilantro. And then v uh, Dennis has the vegan version of the same thing. All right, I'm gonna take the camera. We're gonna go upside down here. <laughs> so the vegan version has a selfish cow vegan cheese and then Palermo's unreal sausage. Oh yeah, look at look that. Look at that, that looks great. It does. Good the in my belly. The potato on this. Yeah, I love, uh, yeah, the slice, Dante's pizza is great. The slices of the day are really what bring me back. I love seeing what you guys come up with. Uh, is the Solidarities thing, is that a Blind Adam thing? Yes, it is. Adam Gogola. I love Blind Adam. So they used to do it every week. Uh, so they definitely need more donations. So anyone who's interested in donating should because they've had to cut down to once a month. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, stop it. As yeah? I won't. <laughs> mm. I, I my won't, I won't not stop so good. it. The potato on the pizza. That's yeah. a lovely surprise. Thank you. Oh, that yeah. really is good. This one was uh, one of my chefs, Matt McCammon, came up with this one. Uh, he does a lot of really good things and is very creative with these, I think. Holy crap. Oh, this is really good, too. How about yours, Dennis Buckley? Yeah? Very good. Yeah, what do you think of the vegan cheese on that? You know what? My my real only real experience with vegan cheese um, prior to this was uh, uh, rice, rice milk cheese. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's not great. No, but this is really good. This is a palm oil-based cheese. Uh, You're no stranger to palm oil. <laughs> hey <-oh. laughs> Of course he says that like I got a mouthful, so I can't defend myself. No stranger to a mouthful either. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've lost control. We're five minutes in. I've completely lost Here control. You're right. That was going to be a respectful podcast. Uh, but this is the, the potato. The potato, I think, is the star, but although I haven't gotten to the chorizo yet, so... This the vegan chorizo, uh, Alex Palermo has a company called Palermo's Unreal Foods. They're doing all of our vegan meats at the moment. So this chorizo, sausage, pepperoni, uh, steak for, for a Philly cheese steak, uh, turkey that, we, that we'd use on a cold sub. And they've got mm -hmm. all kinds of other products that you can find on their website too. Does he do, and I imagine he probably does some version of seitan? They're mostly seitan based, okay. but not everything. Gotcha. But the recipes, so they use our kitchen to make their product. Oh. Um, but still, it's their own business. Mm -hmm. So the recipes are not something I know 100% about. Tim, I, I see a lot of push toward more vegan products, more mm -hmm. interest. I mean, I see from an alcohol perspective, a lot of NA beers. Yeah, like absolutely. Every, it seems like every liquor brand spirit brand and beer brand has its own na yeah are, are we seeing a moment in terms of like health conscious everything a absolutely i mean before vegan products anyway was definitely more of a you know subcultural thing mm -hmm. a lot of punk rockers hippies and stuff 
people like that wanted it. Now I don't. I don't see any difference. All walks of life yeah. are interested in it. The NA beer thing too. It used to be like Klaus Tauler <laughs> and uh, Sharps. Sharps, Sharps, right? <laughs> which both suck. <laughs> uh, but now there's, you know, you can get an NA IPA or Stout, and they're yeah, just Lagunitas as good as other, other right, other craft beers. And the mocktail thing is a big deal too. Mm-hmm. That's not something we've latched onto yet, but I'd like to eventually. And a lot of those places are putting CBD in those. Right. It's which, an interesting moment. I mean, I, as a restaurateur, it's an interesting moment to be aware of. And it's not. It's definitely not a fad of any kind. Mm-mm. And I, I'm I'm super into it. I mean, it, not only because it's helped our business, just adding it, but <laughs> it makes making food more interesting. Oh, I bet. I want to talk about what's happening at Dante's in a second. But first, Dennis Buckley, we're talking about Dante's, but your role in this conversation, you're going to start DJing at Dante's. DJing, I would I would use in quotes. Okay, you're going to start DJing at yes. Dante's. Yes, uh, yeah, this Thursday, uh, this Thursday will be uh, the, not my first time uh, doing something like this, but my first time this year. Um, I did a little something at the Burlington um, mm-hmm. at the end of last year. So uh, Thursday the 24th at Dante's on Chicago Avenue. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Tim and I were talking when I first got over to the uh, over to the tavern that March 17th of 2020, we were originally going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was going to be partnered up with uh, young Dan Precision. Um, and then the, uh, the little thing called COVID kind of got in the way. Right. So this is kind of like my uh, your triumphant return, my tri- <laughs> the, the return that never was. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm excited though. This pizza is excellent. You mentioned Dan Precision, Mr. Precision. Did 88 Fingers Louis just quietly go away? Yes. Like quietly, <laughs> right? Like I, yes. I feel like I would have been more aware of something like this, but you just <laughs> kind of faded into the ether. Well, we're 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 on what the kids say uh, an indefinite hiatus. Mm. We 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 have learned. To not say, uh, we will never break up unless, God forbid, one of us uh, leaves this mortal coil. Um, and while we still uh, have a modicum of uh, love for each other, uh, no, I just I uh, I kind of thought after the uh, last one of the shows we did right before COVID, COVID hit. There was no pressing reason to get together to practice. Um, and I just, it, for me, it just kind of lost its luster. And I think it was, I think it was more along the, 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 the lines of we'd been doing it, even though we weren't doing it full time, we were doing it consecutively for six years straight. Right. And I think I just kind of hit a, hit a wall, but we're, we still, you know, we're still part of a text chain. I, I, I talked to those guys probably once, once every couple of weeks. You had a very adult breakup for 88 Fingers, Louie. Uh, this was by far by the most far. mature. <laughs> by f- far. Uh, yeah. Um, I saw Dan uh, a couple weeks ago out at the at the Beat Kitchen, and we kind of talked things over, m- m- you know, talked more about things. And mm. I, we're, unless there's a pressing reason to play shows again, I think we're okay taking it. Uh, I get it. it was worth mentioning because it just kind of stopped. Yeah, I mean, if, if if we hated each other and, you know, we wanted to break up, then, yeah, we would have been like, well, guess what, guys? R.I.P. 88FL. <laughs> Never again till five years from now. You could have sold a lot of those shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Never mind what I just said. 88 R.I.P. <laughs> I hate that's everybody. That's a business owner back there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Looking for opportunities, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yeah, no, it, it it's... it's uh, it doesn't remain a current thing, um, but it's not a forgotten thing. That's the best way I can. It put wasn't it. that last show you played with us in Bloomington. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first nail in the coffin. <laughs> and by us, Canadian Rifle is Tim's band. The, correct. I, did, I didn't introduce you as such because we're talking about your pizza, but yeah, your Canadian Rifle, uh, new seven-inch EP yes. out like a week from when we're talking. Right, it's like almost there. It came out two days ago, okay. actually. On uh, Rad Girlfriend Records out of Dayton, Ohio. Shout out to Josh Goldman. Mutual friend of Dennis and I's Josh Goldman runs that label and is a bit, is in uh, the Raging Nathans, the Dopamines, 
a handful of other bands. But yeah, he released the seven inch. Right now, I think you can just get it from him and listen to it on New Noise, the New Noise magazine website. Awesome. And yeah, I, I saw um, singles for sale on their their corner of Bandcamp.com. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. I think it's green vinyl, black vinyl, and mystery and there's vinyl. a random splatter uh-huh. pattern too. And the record's called "I'm Just Like You." You're no stranger to the random splatter pattern. Yeah. Uh-uh. Here we go. No. <laughs> no stranger to most things. Oh. That's right. <laughs> He's omnivorous. Stranger danger. <laughs> I'm a stranger danger. I mean, not, I'm not a stranger danger. Well, I love the fact, Dennis Buckley, that uh, starting Thursday, the 24th of March, you're doing these D- DJ choosing things. songs. Choosing yes. songs. I have a playlist I am pressing play on, and it's a great one. Fantastic. And he'll be there. You can yell stuff at him. <laughs> Here's the thing about Dennis Buckley, and I've said this before on this podcast. I've said it to him in private. Uh, he has a wonderful taste in music. In, in a world where curation, I think, is a dying art, Dennis does a really nice job, and he has a very wide spanning. It's not here's the eighty-eight fingers Louis guy, but you know you could talk to him about the church or mm-hmm. absolutely, or, or you know an Elvis Costello deep cut. He could probably get you there. Or at the gates. Yeah, at the or, gates. <laughs> yeah, we Tim, Tim and I, uh, in addition to being uh, lovely and, and, and good friends, we uh, for a fraction of a time we we were part of a musical project. Yeah, um, briefly, very briefly, too brief if you ask me. But it's Tim's fault, not mine. Um, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it was not. It was not. We we um, we took said project and we recorded with um, our friend Shane at his studio in Milwaukee. And on the ra- on the ride there and back, it was just Tim and I. And we played we played just a million different types of music. And I I, I found out on that trip that. He was a lot more open-minded that I gave him credit for, and I, th- <laughs> and I think vice versa. Yeah, that was a good ride. I honestly thought we were just like, here's here's me with another punk rock kid. We're probably just going to listen to nothing but punk rock. Mm-hmm. No, and not, I, not at all. And then I said, hey, you know, there's a new Bob Mould record out. We did <laughs> listen to that like three times. Three times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three times in 2015 or whatever that Although, was. punk rock guy stretching out and listening to Bob Mould. I know. Really that I was going to say, that's well, not really that much of a stretch. Way to really, you know, <laughs> leave your boundaries for right. a little bit. <laughs> And it, it was one of the three-piece rock records. It wasn't one of those like electronic ones. Right. Yeah. It wasn't. Mod- we weren't listening to modulate. Um, but yeah. No. We. we uh, yeah. So we. I mean, not to not to uh, not to make it even more cornier than I already am about to. But that trip. Uh, that was one of those like. I was friends with Tim before this trip. Now I'm really good friends with Best Tim before friends. this trip. We are. We 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 could be considered BFFs. That also, that's also, dude, why I thought of you to do this. Because I, I don't say, want, yeah. I mean, Dante, like, we play mostly metal, goth music, punk music, but I know that you'd be able to push that a little, but not something that's not a Dante's vibe, you know? Yeah. And stuff that we wouldn't maybe think to play ourselves, or I don't know about <laughs> the rest of the staff, but whenever someone asks me what I want to listen to at work, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying to make sure the we're not forgetting somebody's order. <laughs> yeah, so right. you decide. So I want someone else to decide, someone that I trust, and you, everyone else didn't answer. So then I <laughs> called you. Yeah, great. <laughs> so what time on Thursday? 7 o'clock, did we say? Yeah, starting at 7. We close at 11 on Thursdays, so till at least 10. If he feels like going all the way to close, that's great. I have a solid three hours and two minutes worth of music. So 10.02. 10.02. No, I think... I think I could probably stretch it out to ten fifteen, and then just, and then just hit you know, camper van Beethoven the rest of the time. Ooh, yeah, not not, not a bad choice. Not um, that's not an insult. That's no. That's literally as I'm putting up my uh, my playlist. It's the suggested songs that come on after that. It was either not not to give it not to give too much of the playlist away. My choices were either uh, Husker Du, uh, more Husker Du, I should say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hint hint. Um, Camper band Beethoven, and like um, I think fucking Sisters of Mercy. Speak, speak of uh, we was just sister, playing. In there. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. I walked into Dante's Lucretia. My reflection was yeah. playing as I walked in, and I said, you know, I, I still enjoy Sisters of Mercy. And Buckley's like, no, nope. yeah, never got him, mm-hmm. never dug him. No, that's my yeah. own, that's yeah, my you're, own. You're wrong. It's my own fault. I, th- oh, I think I know. you're wrong. I, uh-huh. I'll admit when I'm wrong. This today was probably one of the reasons, but I can't for the life of me now. They only have three albums. I mean, they like, 
The, they weren't around long enough for recording studio albums to fuck up. What was the video that was ever present? It was like, come on, baby, baby, come on, baby, baby. Whatever that fucking song was. It wasn't Lucretia. Sisters of Mercy? That doesn't ring a bell. I mean, Moore was a single off vision thing. Didn't did Moore have like a like a super corny like? Come on, I don't remember baby, the video. Baby single like was it like? <laughs> maybe I'm quoting. Bill, maybe I'm getting Billy Ocean and um, and maybe I'm missing something confused. obvious. Like the second album had uh, more <sighs> vision thing. The title track may have been a single. I'm talking like eighty nine ninety is when I remember hearing them. Vision thing was ninety ninety one right? I I don't know. Okay. In any event, the, yeah. the important question is, what Camper Van Beethoven song? <laughs> um, there were, was Aya Fatima was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Take the Skinheads Bowling was... was I think that's too easy. easy. Yeah. It's too, it's too ramshackle. I'd, I'd go like, uh, when I win the lottery, I was born in a laundromat. Yep. Or even the cover, Pictures of Matchstick Men. Yeah. Always a delight. Why not? Or even their, uh, even their Fleetwood Mac album. Mm. Mm. There's a song from Modern Camper... <laughs> It was like that when we got there that I fucking love. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I, I love David Lowry. Put it on the list. <laughs> Gotta get now. Now now you're going till 1017. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I mean, yeah, great. Can't wait. Nothing nerdier than three <laughs> you guys talking about music. <laughs> I swear to God. One of my favorite nerdy moments, <clears throat> J- or James was with you recently. <laughs> we were shopping at, uh, oh boy, oh boy. What's the record store in my neighborhood? Oh, Rattleback. Rattleback. And we both came across the church section. Mm-hmm. And, uh, on a Sunday. It was a on Sunday. a Sunday. <laughs> it was on a Sunday, as a matter of fact. And uh, you had, if I remember correctly, you had picked out your selections for the for the week. Mm-hmm. And you're like, but man. And I, and I can't remember which church record it was. It might have been, it might have been Gold Afternoon Fix. Yeah. Because uh, we were talking about how, how unfairly maligned uh, the, the Steve from the church um, yeah, Steve hates that album. He hates his own hates his and own. To records. be fair, it's in between Starfish and Priest Equals Aura. Like. Right, right. Two 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 great records. Mm-hmm. But I remember like talking about that record, and you're like, oh, if I haven't already made these picks, I would have jumped at that in a second. And not six days later, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just got home with my new church record. <laughs> I mean, come on, Metropolis. Yeah. You're still beautiful. There is going to be there will be a church song in my playlist. Interesting. I, I can't even guess what it'll be because they have like 50 fucking records. It is, uh, it's a deep cut. It's a deep cut. It is not a starfish or a priest equal or a song. So what we're saying here is the pizza slices at Dante are ridiculous. <laughs> um, I, I just, I, I just plowed through mine. That, that potato, chorizo, everything, the salsa or the guacamole. Fuck, that was so good. Um, Thursday night, starting on the 24th, and how frequently after that? Or does it depend on Dennis's performance? I think it depends on my performance. Ideally, every Thursday, and I'd want to sprinkle in some other people when Dennis can't do it. But I'd like it to be, let's call it a residence. I love, let's, let's, let's shall we? residence at Dante's <laughs> oh, Pizzeria. There we are. On Chicago Avenue. So that's Thursday, starting at 7. You could stop by, you could see this man pushing play on any number of songs throughout the night. <laughs> Easily dozens. And it, to be fair, I, I, far be it for me to make fun of a disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> but it just seems not right. Let's talk about Dante's because this space on Chicago Avenue, uh, I, I can't believe we have you in the car for as long as we have you, Tim, because things are going on, things are changing, things are being built up, knocked down. Tell me what's going on there. So we moved into this space about a year, three months ago, because we lost two of our other locations, the tavern at Augusta in California and the original Don- one of the original Dante's Pizzerias at Milwaukee, Diversi, uh, mm-hmm. Kimball. My business partners own the High Dive. We decided to cut it in half. So the High Dive, which is just, just next door. 1938. West, West, yeah. uh, they had both, both addresses were the High Dive. We decided to cut it in half make half of it Dante's, and reopen High Dive Because a huge space. Huge, massive space in Chicago. Bigger than was ever really necessary, Mm -hmm. except for, like, West Fest. Mm -hmm. Um, And we sort of put High Dive on hold for a while. Got Now Dante's is running at 100% delivery, carry out, full bar. And we've been working slowly on High Dive the last few months, and we are reopening it. It's a soft, soft open, but whatever. We can talk about it now. You prefer the hard open. 
Damn, You're no okay. stranger to the hard open. Man! Take it, these licks. It's funnier when you say it over and over. <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, this Wednesday we'll be opening High Dive. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the full menu exactly, but then in a couple weeks later we'll do a larger announcement and have a big party. That's huge. These are like seismic changes where you are. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be a big deal. I'll definitely be there every day from open to close <laughs> next week. We've, I've got new staff coming in, a full new menu for high dive. So you won't be able to get Dante's food on the high dive side and vice versa. Two separate menus, separate businesses, but coming out of the same kitchen. So this is kind of like severance on apple mm -hmm. tv yes. oh what a what the, a great segue the innie and the Audi don't interact but they're the same person <laughs> right mm -hmm. um I or mean, so we think it's the same kitchen staff for sure mm -hmm. so yeah same people that, well, that makes so much sense I, I feel like what you're doing is a good model for other business restaurateurs in the future i've started since i've been talking about this with other restaurant people people have said that or mentioned to me that they're starting to see more things like this not just in chicago but out of state as well I mean, it's just, it's, it's like a ghost kitchen just with two dining rooms. Right. <laughs> it, I mean, well, it's, but you can get both in the dining room and deliver. Yeah. So I guess it is sort of like that. It's interesting. I mean, it, it makes it's perfect sense. It's not quite sense. that, but it's, I, it, yeah. it's a, akin to it for sure. I mean, I'm nervous about it, but I, I'm, by Wednesday, I'll, I will be less nervous and ready to pull it off. And as an owner, I mean, having everything located in the same block sure makes life a whole lot that easier helps a lot but we still do have the original dante's on armitage 3028 west armitage which is just reopened its dining room as well awesome but that's very small it's mainly a carry out and delivery spot but we just did reopen that dining room like two weeks ago after having it been closed for over a year yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to ask you the interview questions. Like, so the past couple of years, they were shitty, right? Like, we <laughs> yes, <all> <laughs> James, they were shitty. <laughs> I mean, but I, I am very proud of my staff, the people that stuck around. We never closed. Um, a couple times because we had potential COVID outbreaks, just to make sure everyone was safe. Yeah. We did for a couple of days, but we never shut down. I kept as many people employed as I possibly could. Sometimes it was insanely slow and it didn't feel worth it. Other times it was so busy because everyone wanted carry out. Yeah. It yeah. was a seesaw between those things. It was never like never normal. <laughs> and I'm hoping after we get high dive fully functional, things will be even out to some sort of normalcy. But in this industry, who knows? For sure. For sure. All right. So again, the, the timeline for high dive is what? We're going to do a soft open Wednesday. I mean, I'm talking about it now. It's Wednesday, not... the 23rd Correct. of March. Wow. And then maybe a week and a half after that, we'll do a bigger party that we'll announce through our social medias. On the Dante's and the High Dive social media. It's exciting stuff. It is. I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's always like the first day is always very scary. And then it's never as hard as you think it's going to be. You know, this is maybe the... That's what she said. I, I knew this coming. Yep. Come on, you gotta give it to me. <laughs> give me one. I, 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 it's important to you, so yes, good one. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Proud of you. Thank you. I love you, Dennis. Love um, you. <laughs> this is maybe the sixth restaurant I've helped open, and it's always terrifying. Sure. But it's always smooths out, and it's important to remember that. It's also important it. to remember that we'll be new, so be nice. That's right. <laughs> just be, just don't be a dick. That that's just a guiding guiding philosophy the, that works. The, the fact that you would see from the from the first day of the of the lockdown through, I mean, the last time I really looked was probably a few weeks ago. People out there, there's so many people out there that still don't give a shit that yeah. that that restaurants are they're they're suffering. Like yeah. the 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 Karens are more Kareny and the Kyles are more Kyleish. I mean, it's yeah. terrible. We, but to spin it more positive, I mean, there are people who's there, there's a whole community absolutely that, that exists to support. Oh, for sure, absolutely. And we definitely experience more of that. That's yeah. good. I mean, they're both there. I'll, for I'll sure. put it that way. Yeah. But we have been fortunate enough to have a lot of loyal customers too. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that. And I mean, we wouldn't have made it without it, for sure. So, I'm excited for this new opening. It's a new thing for us trying this out, but I think it's going to work really well. I, if everything goes how I think it's going to, it will be very smooth, but it never does. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Dante's on Chicago Avenue, just east of Chicago and Damon, right? Correct. 
and uh, we're recording like a block away at Winchester in Iowa. Mm-hmm. Very, very lovely residential area. Yeah, very nice over in here. Ukrainian village. Dozens of dogs. Do- dozens of big dogs. I live in an area where every dog is like a small 15-pound white dog with yeah. like dirty fur. Uh, just these have this neighborhood has majestic big mm-hmm. big family dogs, like dogs that get hugged, like yeah. that dog right, right there. there. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think that dog may have eaten he, something it shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, uh, it looks a little because embarrassed the dog, now. <laughs> the dog parent is trying to extract something from its from its jaws. That dog is Gigi Allen. <laughs> oh no. All right, and Dennis, you start your DJing gig. The DJing gig, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've always, I, I've always had a, a kind of a passing interest in the idea of DJing, and I've only done it once. I did it at the uh, Jerry Bryant's Strange Nineties thing at Metro, and Greg Corner lent me or loaned me mm-hmm. his his gear, and I started looking into it. I'm like, it's too expensive to buy that stuff. It's so expensive. I mean, that's why I was like, just bring your laptop or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't it. have, I don't have the bar space either for you to take up. All those seats. Yeah, I, I got a, uh, and this is, when we talked about doing it, a couple couple things, uh, Tim's like, let's not call it a DJ night, because uh, because there's no room to put any turntables in. Um, but, I you know, I've been kind of plugging it away on social media. It's like, you know, hey, I'm music curator, music selector, whatever the hell it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a couple friends of mine reach out in uh, subsequent days saying, Hey, if this uh, this gig at Dante's works out for you, do you want to DJ at so and so's place? You want to DJ at this place? Mm-hmm. And I was flattered, and I said, "Hey, before I say yes, understand, <laughs> right. I literally am plugging my phone in. I don't even have a lap. I mean, I have a laptop. I'm not a caveman. Brag, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> humble brag. I have a laptop. That's a work. Uh, that's a work laptop. I don't even own my own laptop. Uh, but no, I don't." I, I have all the respect in the world for people that, 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 that friends of mine for years that have done the DJ thing mm-hmm. with, with two uh, uh, two turntables and a microphone. Or even two CD players. Or, to- I mean, there's software yeah. now. Right? Yeah. I mean, there, there is. There is so much There is so much about that world that I don't know. I it's just know impressive. I, like, I don't either. Very mm-hmm. impressive. I just know I like a lot of different kinds of music. And uh, it's safe to say, Tim, Yeah. this will not be a... Uh, this will not be a typical uh, soundtrack for uh, for Dante's. Good. That's that was the idea. Wait, what Dennis means to say is it's going to be a dance party. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a dance party. You it's... will not be able to answer the phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope you guys like uh, unashamedly like some eighties hits. Yeah. Uh, because there will be some eighties hits. Uh, I hope you enjoy the sweet sounds of. The mentors? No, there'll be no, there'll be no, there'll be no mentors this time. Uh, no, I'm excited. There's, there's, there's. It's I'm kind of running the gamut. There's everything from like what I grew up with to what I'm listening to now to what I've, you know, stuff I've liked all my life. A little bit, little bit of everything. I hope people, I hope people get into it. That's awesome. Okay, again, the address for Dante's Pizzeria, 1936 West Chicago Avenue. And the Armitage location? 3028 West Armitage. Fantastic. Your address, Dennis. <laughs> so we can come visit. Yeah. One, two, three, four, <laughs> Wrigleyville Drive. Isn't 1936 that you were, you were born, James? It was. Yeah. Uh, three years before the debut of Superman, interestingly <laughs> interestingly enough, in Action Comics number one. So you're saying it's based on you. It, it is. <laughs> interestingly enough, I was raised by kindly uh, farmers in, in, in Kansas. Who taught me right, right and wrong, and, uh-huh. and taught me how to carry myself in the universe. Middle name Carl L. That's <laughs> that's right. Uh, and as you know, because I'm under a yellow sun, that's what gives me my powers. Mm-hmm. Yes. If things went red, all of a sudden I'd be fucked. That's why you like. Uh... Never mind. You'll get there. No, no, okay, okay. no I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. As 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 great of an insult as I had. And I know this is not a family-friendly podcast. I'm not going to repeat that. My family listens. <laughs> no, that's that's the problem. I don't want don't want your family to hear this. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dennis Buckley, music curator, Mensch, Tim, restaurateur, Canadian rifleman. <laughs> yeah, accurate. An all-around super winner, Tim Murphy. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys. I, you know, I, I haven't been doing many of these in in the car because of the whole. You know, because of the stand, so it's nice to be able to do it with you guys. Yeah, tonight. thank you. This yeah. is nice. 